trigonometry word problems. So today I'm going to do seven different word problems. We're going to talk about angles of elevation and depression. And in the next lesson, I'll do some more word problems that get progressively more difficult. So let's talk about what an angle of elevation and depression is first. So if you were in my classroom, I would have been standing up at the front like this, and I would be holding two rulers. So they're kind of on top of each other like this. And I would hold them up to my eye level. And then I would look to something on the wall. And I would tell my students that leaving this bottom ruler where it is, if I lift the other one up, if I'm pointing at, usually it was a clock on the wall here, I'd say my angle of elevation to the clock. So leaving one here, which is what we call the sight line, your sight line, okay, where you're looking straight ahead and measuring it up is an angle of elevation. So then I would say, okay, then I put my two rulers back together and I would leave one steady and bring the other one down to look at something on the floor, which was usually just the door bottom of the door. So going this way, this would be an angle of depression. So to elevate, that makes sense, right? You elevate it, elevate it up. You take an elevator upstairs, angle of elevation and angle of depression going down. Okay, so you have to understand that in order to draw your diagrams and know where to put the angles. Okay, so let's go on to some word problems and it'll all make more sense. The angle of elevation of the top of a building. Now, I've always thought this sounded kind of strange. Elevation of, I would say angle of elevation to, but this is kind of the lingo you might see in your textbook. The angle of elevation of the top of a building is 72 degrees from a point 54 meters from the foot of the building. How high is the building? Okay, you always want to draw yourself a diagram. So we have the ground. We have a building. There's my building. And it says the angle of elevation of the top of a building is 72 degrees. So angle of elevation, this time it's going to be from the ground up. Okay, so there's the angle of elevation, watch, elevation, boop, boop. And it's 72 degrees from a point 54 meters from the foot of a building. So that means this distance from here to here is 54. Now, what do you want to find? It says asking you to find the height of the building. So you want to know this height here. Okay, so going back to what we've learned with primary trig, we are going to label the sides and we're gonna start by, what do we have? So we have this angle here. So if I put my finger on this angle here, this is my hypotenuse. That doesn't come into play in this word problem. I'm looking at these two sides. You can still label it, doesn't hurt. I'm just not gonna use it. And I'm gonna put hype here, just so you know it's not the height of the building. So we have the opposite side. Oh, maybe we should have said adjacent, so we could say aha uh -huh first. So aha, uh -huh. and the this side is then going to be the opposite. So I have opposite and adjacent, O and A, and an angle. So what trig ratio will use O and A? And you should be saying to a. Uh. So that means I want to use the tangent ratio. So I'm going to say the tan, the tan of 72 degrees, remember you need an angle, tan of something, if it's theta or an angle, you've got to write that in. Tan of 72 degrees equals the opposite side, which is the height of the building. I'm gonna put HT here just so you don't say, oh, it's not hypotenuse, it's opposite over adjacent and the adjacent adjacent is 54. So now I want to solve for the height. So the height will be 54 times the tan of 72. And you could put this over one if you want to. I'm just going to say height equals 
54 times the tan of 72 degrees. And that's going to give me, you get out your calculator, so you go, let's clear that lesson off. 54 times the tan of 72 degrees, bam, 166.2. So approximately 166.2, the height is in meters, therefore the building is approximately 166.2 meters. And there's your first question. Okay, the second one, it says a tower 115 meters high casts a shadow 24 meters long. Find the angle of elevation of the sun. Okay, so again, don't forget you're going to draw a diagram. Now, if you're watching this online, I would suggest that you stop and draw your diagram and then come back and see if you got the right answer, okay? You have to do it. Don't just watch. Do, do, do. Da, da, da. That's all I want to say to you. Okay, so there's my tower. It's my tower. 115 meters. And it casts a shadow. Now, <laughs> I know you're going to laugh when I say this, but I have had students tell me that this is the shadow. That's not the shadow. The shadow is not in the air. The shadow is always on the ground. So you want to put your shadow here. Okay, this is shadow. Maybe it's not quite so obvious, right? If you did it, I apologize. Didn't mean to laugh. Here's your shadow. And it's 24 meters. Find the angle of elevation of the sun. So my sun is over here. I should have had my yellow out. Here's my sun shining, and it creates this shadow on the ground. So the angle of elevation of the sun is going to be here. We're going to call it theta. Okay, so now I know what I'm looking at. I need to know which trig ratios am I going, what trig ratio am I going to use? that was, is going to use 115 and 24. So when I'm here, I'm not using the hypotenuse, I'm using the opposite and the adjacent. So I'm going to say the tan of theta equals the opposite, 115, over the adjacent, 24. So remember now that this is giving you a ratio, right? So to go from ratio to angle, I want to do this calculation, tan negative 1, of this ratio. Now note I didn't divide this out because I'm sure we get something with lots of decimals. So you want to leave all that in your calculator as much as possible. So you can say that is equal to theta. So theta is approximately equal to, and remember on your calculator you do second tan Make sure again, I didn't say this at the beginning, but make sure that your calculator is in degrees or you won't get the right answer. And I get 78.2 degrees, that's rounded to two decimals. So approximately 78.2 degrees. Okay, so they're kind of fun, aren't they? I know you're laughing, you see, Miss Havrock. Math is so much fun, I love it. From the top of a cliff, 120 meters above the water. Okay, so let's draw a cliff here. I'm going to move it over a bit. So here's my cliff. Now, the other thing in math, everything's always seemed to be perpendicular to the ground or to the water or to whatever. Okay, so never, never assume that you have some other angle to deal with. I'm even going to move my cliff out here. So it's straight drop, 90 degrees. From the top of a cliff, 120 meters above the water, okay, so I know this is 120 meters, and the water is down here. Where is my blue marker when I need it? Um, the angle of depression of a boat on the water is 18 degrees. Okay, so we're going to put our boat here. Nice sailboat. Now the angle of depression, so here you have to draw this one in. So remember, you have to have a sight line first. So let's say this is my sight line here, looking straight, parallel to the ground or parallel to the water. And there is an angle of depression. Now, 
If it was 18 degrees, it would be way over here. That's not going to fit my diagram, so just pretend, okay? So we're going to pretend this is 18 degrees, which it definitely is not. Okay, so this angle here is 18 degrees. I know, you're saying that's so not right. How far away is the boat from the cliff? Okay, so here's the boat, here's the cliff. That's what I'm trying to find. I'm going to put an X there. How far is the boat from the cliff? Okay, so what are we going to do? The angle's up here. Now you should remember something from grade 9, maybe grade 10 again. You have a Z pattern. So if these two lines are parallel, and they should be because your sight line is going to be straight across, that means this angle here is also 18 degrees. Or you might have said, oh, well, I was just going to say that this other angle in here, so this angle here, is 72 degrees, right? Because this is 90 minus 18. That would be 72 degrees. So either way, you can work with either of these angles to find this side length here. So let's go back to the 18 degrees that I found here. So if my finger is here, this is my orange finger, then this is the opposite and the adjacent. Right? Opposite and adjacent. So I'm going to be using tan. So I'm going to say the tan of 18 degrees equals opposite, which is 120, over x. Now if you've gone to this one here, you would be saying the tan, well, let's do both of them, let's see what happens. The tan of 72 degrees, tan of 72 is opposite over adjacent, is x over 120. Okay, so solving for this one, I'd say eight, x is 120 times 1, I'm not going to write in, well, I'm going to put in, times 1 divided by the tan of 18 degrees. And if I did this one, I'd say x is 120 times the tan of 72 degrees. Okay, let's see who wins here. Let's get out the calculator. So I have 120 divided by the tan of 18 degrees, and I get 369.3. 369.3. And if you had gone to this one, we would have had 120 times the tan of 72. Oh, look at that. Very same answer. 369.3. So that just proves something very important. All right? These are right angle here and we have the tans. Okay, so then you're going to just give a concluding statement. Therefore, the boat is approximately 369.3 meters from the cliff. Okay, don't forget to do concluding statements. Those are important. It's all part of your math presentation. Okay, so let's move on to the next little set. Okay, number four. It says a 150 meter tower is to be secured with four guy wires. Do you know what a guy wire is? I always have students say, Miss, what's a guy wire? Why isn't it a girl wire? A guy wire is like a wire that you use. You've probably seen them before. It kind of holds the tower up. So let's say, um, here's my tower, and you would have wires that come down like this. Only in this case, there's going to be four of them. I'm only going to draw two on because the other ones would be kind of coming at you, right? You put them all around equally. And each making an angle of 55 degrees with the ground. Okay, so let's say with the ground, 55 degrees. And the tower is 150 meters. And I want to know, find the length of wire required for each wire, for each guy wire, allowing four meters extra for each for fastening. Okay, so that four meters, I'm just gonna add that on in the end, because what I really wanna know is how long is this wire? So I have my angle, 
put my little finger here. I'm looking at, this would be adjacent, don't need that one. I'm using this one over here, that's the opposite side. And I'm using the hypotenuse is what I'm trying to solve for. Okay, so O and A, O, sorry, O and H is O, and that means so, right? So that means I need sine. So I'm going to say the sine, I have my angle, 55 degrees, equals opposite 150 over the hypotenuse, which is what I'm solving for. So quick little n calculation here, h is 150 times 1 divided by sine 150 times 1 divided by the sine of 55 degrees and we pull in our trusty calculator so we have 150 times 1 divided by the sine of 55 degrees equals 183.1 so approximately 183.1 and your concluding statement is going to say therefore the guy wire needs to be now we're going to just add four extra meters to this so 187.1 meters okay so number five maybe take a stop here write it out and see if you can do it yourself and then come back Kelly lets out 175 meters of kite string, then estimates the angle of elevation of the kite is 30 degrees. What is the height of the kite if Kelly holds a string 1.2 meters above the ground? Okay, here's Kelly. She's going to be standing here. Ooh, maybe you better move her down. Just left a floating head there. Let's erase it. It's just too morbid. Okay, here's Kelly. She's holding a kite string kite string, she lets out all this kite string, 175 meters of it, and it makes a 30 degree angle. Here's my kite out here. Boom, boom, boom. And it's uh, blowing in the wind like that. Okay, you don't have to draw such a beautiful diagram. So this is 175 meters, but the accuracy is there and that's what we want and the numbers and 30 degrees in here and she's holding it 1.2 meters above the ground so that means we have this distance here of 1.2 meters and the question is um, what is the height of the kite okay so you should notice here that when I use this right angle triangle I'm going to find this height here and Let's call it X, just so we don't get our H's and X represent the height above 1.2 meters. Because remember, we're going to have to add in 1.2 meters here to get the whole height, right? I'm only solving for this with the trig. So this is my X over here, and I'm using the opposite and the hypotenuse okay so make sure you label it so opposite hypotenuse and so that means so so what the sine of 30 degrees equals the opposite x over the hypotenuse 175 and x is going to be equal to 175 times the sine of 30 degrees and if we did it perfectly with our little end thing you don't need to do this all the time it's just I think it's helpful for some people so X is this times this divided by that and let's get out the calculator so I have 175 times the sine of 30 degrees and I get 87.5 right on exactly so 87.5 now I want her height above the ground and I'm going to say therefore the kite is 87.5 plus 1.2 equals 88.7 meters above the ground 
Okay, so if you have something where she's holding it or, you know, you have something that you have to add in on the end here, that's just the little extra part. See how smart you are. Okay, number six, what angle will a 72 meter guy wire make with the ground if it secures a tower from a point 45 meters up the tower? Okay, so guy wires now, you're familiar with them. Um, let's draw a tower here. Now some people draw them going the other way, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. So we have the ground, we have, this is the tower going up, and we have a 72 meter guy wire. So let's just bring that down, we'll put it right to the corner. There, so this is 72 meters. And the tower, oh it doesn't say how tall the tower is, the tower actually goes up here, right, here's the tower and it secures from a point 45 meters up the tower. So 45 to here, that's not the height of the tower, it's just where it's attached. And you have to find this angle here, theta. Okay, so let's talk about what sides we have. Finger on the angle, hypotenuse, the long side, here's my right angle. Remember that these trig not, uh, Primary trig ratios only work for right angle triangles. That's just a little service announcement for you. Okay, so this side here, this is adjacent. This is going to be opposite. I have O and H. Sine, I heard you say it. Sine theta equals opposite 45 over hypotenuse 72. So if I want to know the angle, that means theta is going to be equal to the sine negative one of this ratio. Do not divide up the ratio and round it. Keep all the accuracy you have and then just do it. That's why you have a calculator. So second sine, so see it meant sine negative one and I'm just going to put in the ratio 45 divided by 72 and bingo I get 38.68 so 38.7 degrees. 38.7 degrees, therefore the guy wire makes an angle, we're getting there, angle of 38.7 degrees with the ground. There, done. And one more and then um, I'll close this video and we'll do another one in another day. Okay, a tree casts a 23 meter shadow when the angle of sun is 52 degrees. How tall is the tree? Well, I'm even going to go and get a green marker so we can draw a nice tree. So here's my tree. It's a very hot day here in Ottawa today, so trees are really nice to have. Okay, and it's going to make a shadow on the ground of 23 meters. Okay, here's my shadow, 23 meters. And when the angle of the sun is 52 degrees, so the angle of the sun, the sunshine is way over here, right? I'm getting fancy now, the last one. Here's my sunshine. So the sun's angle comes down like this to the ground. Now, of course, you can see if I move the sun lower, we would have longer shadow. If it was higher, it gets shorter, right? You know that. Okay, so I'm trying to find how tall the tree is. So I have this, and my x, or my unknown, is going to be right here. This is x. From here to here. How tall is the tree? Okay, so what do I have? Um, oh, we've got to put the angle of the sun. The angle of the sun is 52 degrees. Okay, so put my finger here. What is this side? That's hypotenuse, it has to say aha, uh -huh. so this is A, adjacent. This is O for opposite. I'll put op there just to help. Okay, so O and A uses tan. Let's get the tan going here. Don't get a suntan, it's not good for your skin. Tan of 52 degrees equals 
the opposite is x, the adjacent is 23, so x is going to be 23 times the tan of 52 degrees, and let's see how that turns out here. Um, what did I say? 23. 23 times tan 52, and I get 29.4 approximately. Don't forget that. 29.4. Therefore, the tree, the tree is approximately 29.4 meters tall. And there you go. There's your first seven word problems. Like I said, the, the next few will get a little more difficult, but um, hope you found this helpful and you completely understand elevation and depression angles. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Keep math free for everyone. Bye for now.